10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to be reviewing DC Fandom 2021. Now, um, this is going to be a little bit different, so let's see how it goes. It could be really good, or it could be a complete disaster. Let's find out what happens. Now, this is the one episode where I'm legit reading off notes, because there's a lot of stuff that I want to go over. Uh, what was announced, what was shown, blah, 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 at, at Fandom. And um, it's just a lot to, you know, try to remember off the top of my head. So, there's clearly no spoilers, clearly this and that, but there probably will be language, so let's go. So DC Fandom um, intros with this beautiful uh, video package of their 80 year history, which is phenomenal. I like whoever did that deserves a prop. Um, they went into this awesome... Um, uh, it was just really awesome how they went into the past, uh, present, and the future of uh, DC. I thought that was really well done. Now, Blake Neely, who's made a couple different um, compositions for the DC CW shows, he um, created a specific uh, theme for fandom, which I think it sounds really, really cool because they incorporated John Williams' uh, Superman score, Danny Elfman's Batman score from 89, and just a couple other bits and pieces into uh, this nice, you know, like, um, thing where it basically uses the quote unquote word fandom uh, as this triumphant thing. So it sounds really cool. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Um, so our first thing is we kick off with the Black Adam behind the scenes uh, footage. Now, the reason why we get behind the scenes footage is because the movie just finished wrapping, just finished, ra uh, just wrapped. I can't talk tonight. It just finished. Uh, it just finished. Rap. It just wrapped. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I told you it wouldn't be perfect. Uh, so it just uh, wrapped. And so what was pretty cool was that they went into this uh, brief history about Black Adam, and um, th and then they showed a little teaser trailer. I think of the intro of the movie, or what's supposed to be the intro to the movie. It looked great. Um, the partial reveal of. Black Adam's uh, costume looked phenomenal. The hoodie looks incredible. Uh, the cape, all that, it looks just really, really good. Um, so I'm, I'm really hyped about this movie. So they also officially announced that it's going to be coming out uh, July 29th, 2022. Okay. So then we kick off, uh, we go into uh, the Flash TV show from CW with Grant uh, Gusterson officially announces that this season the flash is getting his gold boots on the show and you know it's a little things about about this character but the gold boots it just completes the look like it just looks so good so this season you know flash is finally getting his gold boots so i thought that's gonna be pretty cool now we kick off the next uh segment where they go into aquaman and the lost kingdom uh, the movie Aquaman 2 so this movie is still in production right now in London or UK or whatever um, so again we got some behind the scenes footage and you got some incredible concept art okay and they officially released photos today of Black Manta's upgraded costume from the new uh, I think it's is it the new 52 I don't know I can't remember but they just released some brand new concept uh uh, not concepts, some actual photos. Oh my god. It looks so good. Yeah, so the costume is, is, is inspired by the New 52. So the helmet, instead of being black, it's like the silver with red eyes. The costume is like black. Like, it looks phenomenal. Phenomenal. Okay? Like, it's going to pop on screen so well. Like, so yeah, this thing, this costume looks great. Then you have... Uh, Aquaman's new black stealth costume in this movie and his traditional 
gold and a green costume. So this movie is going to be really, really cool. Um, they showed a little stuff of, I guess they're Atlantean soldiers or whatever fighting. Dolph Lundgren is going to be back in this movie. Uh, Amber Heard is going to be back in this movie. Uh, I would assume William Dafoe might be back. Maybe. I'm, I'm not too sure about that. But So yeah, so this this movie is shaping up to be really, really good. Um, it's gonna. It should be out uh, late late next year. Uh, I think December was the original what I heard. I don't know, but yeah. So um, yeah, I, yeah. I'm really excited about that one. Also, now they went straight into the Aquaman King of Atlantis animated miniseries. That's gonna, that's going to be coming out on HBO Max. Uh, what's really cool about this is that Fula Borg. Um, He's voicing uh, Aquaman on this animated show. Now, who's Fula Borg? He played Javelin in the Suicide Squad movie. Okay, he um, he was good. Like, I wouldn't mind if they did a little spin-off series for him on uh, you know, on on um on HBO Max or whatever. But it would have to be a, a what's it called? It would have to be a um, prequel or something because he died in the movie. But yeah, so this animated miniseries, okay, um, it's now streaming on HBO Max. But what's, what they're gonna do with it? It's I think a six-part miniseries. So every week it's gonna two episodes are gonna drop for the next couple of weeks. You know, it's this fun, silly little animated show, and I think it's really cool. So I'm all for it. Now, this might uh, sound like old school people who've been reading comics for a while. Um, if you remember Milestone Comics or Milestone Media, or whatever. Um, so basically, they officially announced that Static Shock, the movie, is being produced by Michael B. Jordan, and um, they're working on scripts and this and that as we speak. Um, they're also making uh, what Milestone is doing is they're also making a animated um, kind of like multi-universe of their characters which are all going to intertwine so that's going to be really really cool because um, you know Static Shock was one of the first if not the first uh, black superhero so it kind of helped spawn a new generation of heroes for the African American community who you know as much as they love Superman or they love Spider-Man you know it's kind of sometimes hard to relate to the characters, but now you have characters who look like you, who act like you, who are, you know, sometimes nerdy, you know, but are really smart, or who are, like, willing to do the right thing and shit like that. So, I thought that was cool. So now you're going to have that coming out, and it really just shows how DC is willing, you know, to spread the wings and isn't afraid to touch into their history, you know, and I think that's really, really cool. And what they're doing is they're not doing it because, you know, they're trying to fit into what's going on now in time, you know, nowadays. DC has always been a step ahead of the curve, you know, and I know a lot of people don't want to hear that because, you know, how dare DC be, you know, right about this and that. But it is, you know, like, they've had a trans character on Supergirl, um, you know, for six seasons now. They've had... Uh, three seasons on Doom Patrol, they've had a gay character who's had an incredible story arc who actually, glad, you know, gave complete a lot of recognition and respect to Doom Patrol for doing that, you know. Um, they've had black characters that are willing to do a lot of different things, you know, to make things as open as possible for everybody. You know, are there strong female characters? Yes. Are there strong male characters? Yes. Are there characters of different races and cultures? Yes. And that's kind of how you do it because also on the on the other end of that is you can write an incredible story but you just don't know what's going to hit and click until you actually do it you know because you can have the best story with a white character and it doesn't do squat and then for whatever reason it can be um an asian character and it hits and people love it you just don't know you know it's like just like anything else it could be hit or miss anyway so, um, that movie, I would assume, will be out in 2023, because if they haven't, uh, ha if they don't have a script for Static Shock yet, 
um, and they obviously they're not in production yet or pre-production or whatever. It's gonna be a little while until that movie comes out. Um, I think the animated movie will probably be out first, which is fine, whatever. So, what's cool about this too? Now we go into the video games. Um, so Gotham Knights and the Su Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League movie um, both look fucking phenomenal. Okay, I don't know what they did with this, but it looks really, really good. And I can't wait to get these games when they come out because I think it looks really, really cool. Now, they dropped trailers for the two games. You can see those if you go online and look it up. Um, but what I like about this is that the two characters in Justice League, uh, um, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, uh, so Harley Quinn is voiced again by Tara Strong. Now, if you're familiar with a lot of animated movies and shows or whatever, Tara Strong has voiced a lot of characters over the years. You know, um, she has an incredible voice, but somehow all her characters sound different, even though it's her. It's kind of a trip sometimes to watch her do it, you know. Um, also, if you're a wrestling fan, uh, Samoa Joe, he voices King Shark in... Uh, Suicide Squad Kill Justice League, which I thought was really, really cool. And you might not know her by name, but Deborah Wilson, she voices Amanda Waller. Okay. Now, if you look her up, you're going to know exactly who she is because she's been in everything. Like, she's done so much work that it's just easier if you just Google her, you know. But she, so right off the bat, you have these three, you know, main characters who are like, holy shit, like, you got some really t real good talent behind her. Um, there's also um, a deal that DC has going on with Webtoon where they're going to make uh, an animated series show for Webtoon. It's called uh, Batman of the Wayne Family Adventures. Um, it's, I think, animated shorts or something like that. Uh, but it's just going to be completely different than... Um, most of the things that you're used to seeing with that family, which is fine, you know, um, but you need to either uh, just download the app or, you know, I don't know if they have a website, but you can definitely check that out, you know. Um, so, yeah, these things are pretty cool. Um, the next thing we have is they finally dropped the trailer for the Peacemaker spinoff show from uh, the Suicide Squad. Now, I'll tell you right off the bat, fucking John Cena... He took this character, who nobody really cared for, it's kind of an oddball, and he made him this incredible character. You know what I mean? Now, Peacemaker, essentially Peacemaker is supposed to be what they call a douchey Captain America. Okay, so you know how Captain America stands up, you know, for the rice and all this and that. Peacemaker, he will do whatever it takes to keep peace. Whether it, it means killing people or whatever. Like, he's out there to stop it. Now, what I love about this trailer is, firstly, they use this really cheesy... <laughs> I fucking love James Gunn. They use this really god-awful, cheesy, like, hair, like, metal song or something from one of... It's like a brand new song from one of these bands that are still trying to keep that genre alive for whatever reason. Okay. All right. All right. So be it. So, um, I thought that was pretty funny. So, what else I love about this trailer is, so, we finally get to see Robert Patrick, aka the Terminator, uh, the T-1000, in here, you know, and he plays John Cena's father. Um, Vigilante's costume, bro, it looks great. Like, I love James Gunn. The, the, the detail, the accuracy, it looks amazing, okay? And, let's not forget about Peacemaker's pet, his eagle, named Eagly, okay, and, you know, uh, <laughs> Peacemaker gets a little shit on in the trailer for, like, bringing, you know, his car, his, you know, his patriotic car, which is draping the flag, his, uh, his pet eagle, <laughs> you know, this show looks like it's, this miniseries, not a miniseries, but this eight-episode series is gonna be awesome, okay, I'm telling you, you're gonna love it, pull up the trailer, you'll see. You know, um, this series drops on HBO Max January 13th, 2022. All right. 
Um, so then they they, ta- they officially announced, even though it's been announced uh, a couple weeks ago, but it's officially official that Superman and Lois on the CW is going to season two. If you haven't seen the show, I think I think you'll like it to a certain degree. Um, well, especially the first episode because the first episode they they went and um, it's just full of Easter eggs. It is really really cool. Like. You know, they went on Superman's history and this and that. It has kind of a cinematic feel to it. It's it's really cool. Um, and also they 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 paid farewell to Supergirl um, because, as we know, the series is ending because I'm most of a noise. Look, she had a baby. I get it. She wants to spend time with her family. Plus, she did six seasons of Supergirl. I'm not sure how much more story you can tell from her, and I'm sure at some point she will uh, put on the cape again. Because, you know, she'll probably, um, you know, guest star on other shows. They also officially, even though it's they're under, I think it's in, in production now, uh, Stargirl Season 3 is on the way. Um, so, yeah, a lot, a lot of things got renewed really quick. Like, the, the season before ended, and then they went right into the next season. Because what I think is, what they're trying to do is the following year next year they want to have the traditional times off where they don't really film in the summer or if they do so you can have the fall previews and, and this and that um so we'll see how that goes also they announced um another animated sh- show called my adventures of superman um that's going to be coming to hbo max uh it's basically <laughs> you know superman as a I think a high schooler or something. Um, I can't. I, I can't remember. But it's supposed to be an animated show. But uh, there was nothing shown about it, no concept art, nothing because it's supposed to be coming to HBO Max. Um, I think next year. Um, and what's all right? What else is cool is speaking of animated. So they played another uh, uh, teaser trailer for DC's League of Super pa- uh, Super Pets, the animated movie. Um, what's really cool about this, the cast to this movie is fucking amazing. So you have The Rock playing Crypto, you have, uh, uh what's his name, Kevin Hart playing, uh, Batman's dog, um, you have Vanessa Bayer, Jim Halpert himself, John Krasansky, okay, you have, uh, Diego Luna, you have, um, Natasha Leon, the incredible Kate McKinnon, and... The legend himself, Keanu fucking Reeves, in this movie. Like, holy shit. Trailer's gonna drop in November, and the movie's supposed to come out uh, May 20th, 2022. Uh, they also officially announced that Doom Patrol is getting to season 4 on, on HBO Max. Titans is getting to season 4 on HBO Max. Season 1, one and 3 are streaming right now. If you, if you haven't seen it, go see it. And they officially announced, even though it's in production now, that Batwoman on CW is getting a third season. Okay. Yeah. Told you, there's a lot. Um, the Flash movie. So the next thing up is the Flash movie. Now, this thing looks fucking spectacular. I'm so stoked about this movie. Um, the movie's still in production, so we didn't get a trailer. We got some sort of teaser. Okay. In the teaser, though, you see Supergirl, Batman... Um, you, you, you know, you see, uh, you actually see two flashes. I'm like, all right. So does Flash go back in time and meet with his old self? Who knows? But in this movie, you know, you're gonna see the Batmobile. You're gonna see Batfleck, uh, Ben Affleck's Batman. This movie's gonna be spectacular. Like, I think people are really, really falling asleep. Not falling asleep, but I don't. I think people are. I don't think people understand what to expect from this movie. So it's, it's, that movie's coming out next year too. Um, I think I think November is the target date. Um, so they also announced that the Sandman show uh, is coming to Netflix real soon. They don't have a, a specific date for it yet, um, but it is coming. And for what it is, I think it's gonna be. It, it looks fine. Like I don't know, but it looks. I know they did a little gender swapping or race swapping or whatever, but that happens so much that who really gives a shit anymore? 
but we'll see how that goes. So also, um, they uh, teased the Injustice animated movie. Uh, the movie's out now uh, on, on, on home video and streaming and all that. Um, so check that out. Also, what's cool is, although it's, it was announced, but they officially announced it today that the Blue Beetle movie, yes, the Blue Beetle HBO Max movie, is officially underway. They haven't started filming or nothing, but they are writing a script. So this movie, I think, will be out in 2023 also. But um, unless they just write a crazy script right now and go straight into production, which doesn't work, it doesn't work that way. <coughs> Merry Christmas. Um, it doesn't work that way. So um, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so the next thing up is they announced the, uh, a new animated movie coming out February 8th called Catwoman Hunted. All right. This is one of five animated movies that have nothing to do with the, uh, the other stuff, but these are five animated movies that are coming out. Okay. Um, the next one up is called Constantine, House of Mystery. They also have Teen Titans Go and DC Superhero Girls, Mayhem in the Multiverse. So they're doing a collab. Then you have the Green Lantern, uh, Beware, uh, Beware My Power. Is that right there, right? And then you also have Battle of the Super Sons, which ironically, this is really interesting because this is going to be a test run. So the Battle of, of the Super Sons is going to be uh, the first ever CG DC movie. So I'm very interested to, interested to see how that's going to turn out, you know, because some of the CG uh, animated stuff that's been coming out, like Rugrats, it looks a little creepy, but um, we'll see how that goes. Now, the next thing up is, so the Batgirls uh, HBO Max show, a uh, movie that's coming out. They, uh, I don't know if they were joking around, but they announced that she will have her red hair, which is fine by me, you know. Um, they also said that they showed it in concept art of her with red hair, so I'm like, cool. Um, the filming is going fil to begin filming soon. Um, how soon? I'm not 100% sure, but it's supposed to be filming soon. So I would assume by this time next year, we should um, be ready to talk about the trailer or whatever is coming out with that. Um, so also Harley Quinn Season 3 is currently under production and they place they played a really funny trailer of like of like the show undone and they're still trying you know uploading it and working on it um but that's gonna happen man you know covid delayed everything um they also announced this is really cool so they announced another animated series uh for hbo max called batman cape crusader um what's really cool about this sh uh show is that it's supposed to be kind of in the vein of Batman the Animated Series. And if you haven't seen that series, dude, what are you waiting for? It is spectacular. Okay. They also announced that uh, the first two episodes of Young Justice are um, of Young Justice Season 4 are out now on HBO Max and it's going to be dropping a new episode every week. Um, there's also a lesser known character, a lesser known series, I think it's a mini series. Um, being filmed now starring Rosario Dawson called DMZ. Okay. It's filming now. Um, so if it's a mini series, I think probably by March we should be hearing something. Maybe April. I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure. But um uh, that's cool, I'm almost done. Alright. Uh, last page. So also we got a teaser for the Naomi C W show. Naomi is another character who she's relatively new um her comics are pretty new so what i do like about this naomi character is that they could kind of do whatever the hell they want where the uh where the maybe the the show um can help out the comics and and tell the comics where to go or vice versa we'll, we'll see but um it's currently in production right now so I mean, I, I I know it's definitely coming out next year. I just don't know exactly when. Now the cool thing is too, so they um, they showed Shazam: Fury of the Gods. Um, since the show, since the movie just finished filming, 
there's really nothing that, that they can show us yet. Plus, the movie's coming out in 2023, so why the hell would you show too much right now anyway? Um, so they showed us some concept art, and the concept art looks spectacular. Like, it looks really, really good. Um, the movie's in, in post-production right now, so uh, the reason why they filmed it now is because um, if they waited till next year to film it, the kids would look completely very, very different from the first Shazam movie to now. You know, now they kind of look a little bit different, but it still fits a timeline. But if they waited, the kids would have like sprouted up. That's just how it is working with kids. Um, even though they announced this months ago, it's a kind of officially official where uh, Patty Jenkins will be back to film Wonder Woman 3. And I know a lot of people are shitting on, on that because they didn't like Wonder Woman 2. I just don't think they understood Wonder Woman 2. That's all. You know, we've been through that already. Now, last but not least. The biggest news of the night is they dropped a new trailer after a year for the Batman movie starring Robert Pattinson. Or as we call him, Robert Pattinson. I know. I'll see myself out. Now, this trailer looks phenomenal. So, the cinematography to this trailer, uh, this movie's going to look beautiful. Like, the cinematography, the way shots are framed, you know... Uh, the use of color, it just looks good. Oh my God, does it look good? Now, what, what, like I said about this when I originally talked about this, what people need to realize about the Batman movie, it's in the second year of, of Bruce Wayne being Batman, so he's he doesn't know the line of where Bruce starts and where Batman begins. No, no pun intended. Um, he doesn't like he. There's no balance. Like he doesn't really give a fuck anymore, or doesn't understand you know, why he should be, you know, separate from all that. Um, what also annoys me is that people, you know, so I get, you know, look, people are going to are gonna be shitting on whoever gets casted, in, casted and whatever, but when I remember, when I was a kid, when I was a little, little boy, uh, I remember Michael Keaton being casted as, well, not casted, but I was too young to remember that, but later on, I found out, you know, when Michael Keaton was cast as Batman, um, and the backlash that came out of it because he was like, uh, wasn't a serious actor or whatever. And then uh, years later, when Jared Leto was casted as uh, the Joker, people went crazy with that. When when Ben Affleck was casted as Batman, people lost their fucking minds, you know. But what people don't understand is that every time you shit on these characters they end up doing incredible. Now, Robert Pattinson, people don't understand, he's done 19 movie projects since Twilight. Okay? 19. Now, a couple of the 19 I could point out is that, so, he was spectacular in the Lighthouse movie. If you haven't seen that, go look, go watch it. It's phenomenal. He also killed it in Tenet. And then he killed it also in The Devil All the Time on Netflix. Like, he did a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal job. Like, in all, all those movies and then more. He did a f- fantastic job. So I think he's going to kill this movie. Now, what else about this movie I loved, uh, about this trailer, I mean, is that Zoe Kravitz, who's playing Selena Kyle Catwoman, dude, she's going to kill this role, you know? I know everyone's like, well, saying, well, Anne Hathaway is my Catwoman. It's like, but Anne Hathaway wasn't really Catwoman. They never called her Catwoman in that in that movie. In The Dark Knight Rises, if you notice, she's always called Selina. She's never called Catwoman, ever. You know, even though it's implied with the ears, uh, with the glasses going up that look like ears and this and that, she's never called Catwoman, ever. Now, Michelle Pfeiffer, her Catwoman... <sighs> might be the bar to set because she she killed that role you know and as far as Halle Berry goes that's not Catwoman people need to understand this and the reason why I'm saying this is because it's Catwoman in name only okay um I think the character's name I think is called Precious or something so she has really nothing to do with the lore of, of Catwoman or whatever like it's just it's it's kind of its own thing but look what people need to remember too that that at the time that was just how things were done okay it wasn't until batman begins that came out where 
people saw like holy shit we can take these movies and make them serious and and make them great you know because yeah yeah toby Maguire's spider-man universe was out already and you know blade already came out but those were i mean those were serious but they weren't serious like batman begins where it could be like really dark but positive you know you know what i mean like so i don't know so anyway so dc fandom there's a lot of stuff coming out it looks like we're getting four or five uh, movies i think four movies next year and then you're getting five animated movies then you're getting the hbo max shows there's a lot of cool stuff coming out anyway uh so dc fandom i know a lot of people were expecting okay now real quick for whatever reason people just assumed we were gonna get an announcement for the david ayer cut of suicide squad yes uh during dc fandom i don't know why they thought that um because on indigenous on, indig- on indigenous day the former columbus day they posted a photo they being wb um posted a photo of slipknot from a year suicide squad now slipknot the car- the actor he's native american it's indigenous day hello you know and the people are like yeah yeah we're gonna do it we're gonna do it we're gonna do it you know we won we did it and nothing came out now i do think we're gonna get the air cut and it's gonna be its own individual announcement just like they did with the snyder cut um but that's gonna that's gonna happen next year not now um once that once that merger of discovery happens you 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 you're gonna get this you're gonna get this back you're gonna get uh um uh Zack Snyder's stuff you get everything so just be patient anyway I could rant about this a little bit more but there's nothing nothing else to really talk about so uh DC fandom was a success there's a lot of cool stuff coming out um oh by the way also with the Batman movie I love the fact that the Riddler is the main villain of this movie. Paul Dano's Riddler, phenomenal, phenomenal. Like this guy, holy shit. Um, yeah, I could rant about this and rave about this all day, but DC fandom, this is a success. Um, we have a lot of cool stuff coming out. Uh, it's gonna be really, really cool. Um, let's see how this one works. Uh, this little review thingy I just did, which is pretty long. Anyway, um, so till next time. Get your nerd on.